A Course in Miracles, Manual for Teachers, 22. How are healing and atonement related? Healing and atonement are not related. They are identical. There is no order of difficulty in miracles because there are no degrees of atonement. It is the one complete concept possible in this world because it is the source of a wholly unified perception. Partial atonement is a meaningless idea, just as special areas of hell in heaven is inconceivable. Accept atonement, and you are healed. Atonement is the word of God. Accept his word and what remains to make sickness possible. Accept his word, and every miracle has been accomplished. To forgive is to heal. The teacher of God has taken accepting the atonement for himself as his only function. What is there, then, he cannot heal? What miracle can be withheld from him? The progress of the teacher of God may be slow or rapid, depending on whether he recognizes the atonement's inclusiveness or, for a time, excludes some problem areas from it. In some cases, there is a sudden and complete awareness of the perfect applicability of the lesson of the atonement to all situations. This, however, is comparatively rare. The teacher of God may have accepted the function God has given him long before he has learned all that his acceptance holds out to him. It is only the end that is certain. Anywhere along the way, the necessary realization of inclusiveness may reach him. If the way seems long, let him be content. He has decided on the direction he will take. What more was asked of him? And having done what was required, would God withhold the rest? That forgiveness is healing needs to be understood if the teacher of God is to make progress. The idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego's thought system. This thought gives the body autonomy, separates it from the mind, and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. If the body could be sick, atonement would be impossible. A body that can order a mind to do as it sees fit would merely take the place of God and prove salvation is impossible. What then is left to heal? The body has become lord of the mind. How could the mind be returned to the Holy Spirit unless the body is killed? And who would want salvation at such a price? Certainly sickness does not appear to be a decision, nor would anyone actually believe he wants to be sick. Perhaps he can accept the idea in theory, but it is rarely, if ever, consistently applied to all specific forms of sickness both in the individual's perception of himself and of all others as well. Nor is it at this level that the teacher of God calls forth the miracle of healing. He overlooks the mind and body, seeing only the face of Christ shining in front of him, correcting all mistakes and healing all perception. Healing is the result of the recognition by God's teacher of who it is that is in need of healing. This recognition has no special reference. It is true of all things that God created. In it are all illusions healed. When a teacher of God fails to heal, it is because he has forgotten who he is. Another's sickness thus becomes his own. In allowing this to happen, he has identified with another's ego and has thus confused him with a body. In so doing, he has refused to accept the atonement for himself and can hardly offer it to his brother in Christ's name. He will, in fact, be unable to recognize his brother at all, for his father did not create bodies. And so he is seeing in his brother only the unreal. Mistakes do not correct mistakes, and distorted perception does not heal. Step back now, teacher of God. You have been wrong. Lead not the way, for you have lost it. Turn quickly to your teacher and let yourself be healed. The offer of atonement is universal. It is equally applicable to all individuals in all circumstances, and in it is the power to heal all individuals of all forms of sickness. Not to believe this is to be unfair to God and thus unfaithful to Him. A sick person perceives himself as separate from God. Would you see him as separate from you? 
It is your task to heal the sense of separation that has made him sick. It is your function to recognize for him that what he believes about himself is not the truth. It is your forgiveness that must show him this. Healing is very simple. Atonement is received and offered. Having been received, it must be accepted. It is in the receiving, then, that healing lies. All else must follow from this single purpose. Who can limit the power of God himself? Who, then, can say who can be healed of what and what must remain beyond God's power to forgive? This is insanity indeed. It is not up to God's teachers to set limits upon him, because it is not up to them to judge his son. And to judge his son is to limit his father. Both are equally meaningless. Yet this will not be understood until God's teacher recognizes that they are the same mistake. Herein does he receive atonement, for he withdraws his judgment from the Son of God, accepting him as God created him. No longer does he stand apart from God, determining where healing should be given and where it should be withheld. Now can he say with God, This is my beloved Son, created perfect and forever so.